Hello, fellow alchemists. Welcome back to our series. Uh, I wanted to go into a little bit different direction. Um, I've actually started finally getting a chance to read through, uh, I think it's called Concurrent Data Processing with Elixir. Uh, of course, I've used processes quite a few times, but I haven't actually delved very deeply into it. And uh, I just started reading a chapter about um, basically tasks. So I have used tasks quite a bit. Uh, usually I use start because I want to start off something and I don't really want to link it to the current caller. So for instance, I have a webhook and I want to start off a task to basically process that data. Well, when I have a webhook, obviously I don't want to process it in the same process as, as you know, the incoming webhook. So I have to basically spin off a task and make sure it gets done. And so I use a task async uh, no link. So that way nothing kind of gets links to it because if I do link it, then that means that of course that task would be killed as soon as the as the process uh, you know gets returned, the data gets returned to the client for the webhook. Uh, and, and, and you don't want the process to ever crash and kind of stop the reply to the webhook. Uh, you know, unless of course you want them to re-hit, but anyways, that's another story. So in this case, um, I have been looking a little bit more at the task module and it's quite interesting. So uh, they did start to explain something to me that I really didn't quite get. Uh, and that's actually the difference between async and yield, right? And so I never really understood the difference, but in the book, they explained it quite well and I actually wanted to show you guys exactly what they mean. And so if you look over here, I'm just gonna start up IEX and I'm gonna actually show you uh, what's actually going on. So if I have a process and I can just spin off this process by using uh, it should be called async. So async will actually return a, a uh, task struct, which you can use to you know pattern match on. And there's multiple ways to do this. Of course, one is just an anonymous function. For this one, I'm just going to use the basically MDA, so uh, or MFA, sorry, module function, and then arguments. So I'm going to basically just say this process is going to sleep for 10 um, 10 seconds. And uh, what I wanted to show you guys is the difference between the two, right? Between a wait and yield. So if I have this process and I want to basically wait on it, and actually this may probably actually expire by the time, uh, I need to do, let me just go ahead and spin up again because it's being a little bit too slow. I want to actually wait on this so I can say wait. Now, if I wait on this, five seconds is the default, and that's just going to time out and just break, right? It actually just killed the task off. It looks like it already finished in that time. So I'm going to run it again, but quicker. So the default for async uh, is just basically going to wait. Sorry. So def sorry, the default for a wait is just going to wait. It's going to, for a wait is going to wait for five seconds for the process to finish. And then finally, it's just going to, you know, kill it if it doesn't. Uh, there's, ways, there's ways to kind of solve this by you know, adjusting the timeouts, uh, but I don't think you can await for infinity. Uh, but yeah, this is basically, you know, keep waiting and then if it doesn't return something, then just kill the process. So you can see over here, um, if you do await and the data comes back, you're gonna get the data back right away. So you're not gonna get this into an okay uh, error tuple. You're just gonna get an okay back. Uh, if it does try to await the task, and doesn't finish in time, in this case, five seconds, as opposed to when I start up this task at 10,000 seconds, uh, you're just going to, you know, get an error saying that the task has, you know, been killed by this uh, await call, right? So that's that's how await works, is it actually tries to wait for that task to finish based on whatever it could be, five seconds on the default, or you could specify how long you want to wait, and then it'll just kill it, right? Now, if we instead use yield, so task.yield, you're going to get nil back if it's not finished. And there's also going to be a little bit of waiting too. So I believe this one also waits for about five seconds. But now if it did finish and I do call that, you're going to get a tuple, an okay tuple. So the sleep will apparently returns an okay tuple. And so you see that we do get an okay tuple and we get the uh, reply back of okay. So if it's not finished yet, you're going to get a nil, you'll see. If it is finished, you will get an okay tuple with the value. I guess if it probably errors out, you're probably going to error tuple. But in any case, yeah, you're going to get this. But if we try to yield again, you're going to get nil again. So that's something else to know is that, you know, it'll keep returning nil until finally it's actually finished. You're going to get the value. And after that, you'll keep getting nil. So uh, the difference between the two about when you want to use which one 
So uh, I would say that for a wait, that would be something where you want something to finish in a certain amount of time. And if it's not finished yet, like maybe you think it's been stuck, then you want to kill it uh, after a certain amount of time. Then I think a wait is definitely the way to go. Now, if you have something that you know will take some time to do and you don't know how long it's going to take and you want it to see and kind of keep pulling it, then using yield was definitely the, the way to go. And you just need to make sure that you yield until you get a value back and then stop yielding or else you'll be in the same situation of keep yielding on nil, uh, even though it's already been returned. So uh, in short, again, I'll just repeat, uh, you know, when you, when you make an asynchronous task, and you await on it, it'll brutally kill it if it doesn't get done by the timeout time. If you instead yield on it, it won't kill the task. It'll let it keep going. It'll still wait on it for a certain amount of time. And you're going to get nil back if it's not done, or you'll get nil back if it's already been finished. Just make sure you keep checking for what the return value is. And so that's basically the difference between the two, right? So it depends on what your use case is. I can see either way being used. Probably more people, at least my side, will probably use yield a lot more because my task they can get completed or not. Uh, in any case, you know, this is Alan from Plangora. Please subscribe if you haven't, otherwise I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.